Google just released major updates for Bard and let's jump right into all the massive changes. Then essentially what we had was a huge upgrade to Bard and essentially the upgrade involves Bard now running on Google's large language model, upgraded large language model, which is Palm 2. So this makes Bard much more efficient about code, about any given topic, which honestly puts it on the level according to some Twitter users and some Reddit users on the level of GPT-4. Now you can actually test this yourself because essentially what they've done with Bard, which is really, really cool, is they've actually removed the waitlist. So now anyone in any country in over 180 areas can actually access Bard, which is really great because previously it was in just a waitlist type of format. So now people can experiment with Bard, which means it's going to improve at a much faster rate because now we've got all of this feedback. So when errors are going to be reported, you can then submit that to Google. And then of course, Bard can improve. So this is going to be a huge win for Google because they're now actually opening this up. And I do think that making it run on Palm 2 is going to be letting more people see that Google's Bard isn't just a failure compared to ChatGPT. But over the coming weeks, we will see what kind of examples and what kind of things Bard is going to be capable of. Then of course, you can see that right here, we have coding with Bard. Now this is a big step up because as you know, code generation is something that a lot of people are working on. And as you know, ChatGPT, especially GPT-4 can do a lot of code generation. But right here, you can see 20 plus programming languages that's going to make Bard much more effective. So I'm not sure if GPT-4 does have access to all these different programming languages, but it does show that Google is trying to focus on areas where it can actually excel. Because from the rumors I've heard and from the whispers in the community, I've heard that many people are actually using Bard to actually debug their code. So it's going to be interesting to see if this code is actually accurate, actually runnable, and actually very, very good. So you can see right here, this is where they're making Python to generate a scholar's move in chess. And then the thing I do like about Bard is that it actually does these, I guess you could say outputs very, very quickly. If you've ever used Bard, it literally puts out everything very instantly, whereas ChatGPT is quite slower, especially GPT-4. So I do think that the race is actually on. And I do want to point one thing out. Of course, Bard is a lot quicker at generating code. I do honestly understand that the majority of people who actually use code want it to be accurate and would prefer accuracy over speed because speed is useless if your code doesn't work. So yeah, it's good to see that Google is actually producing more effective code with Bard running on Palm 2. And it's gonna be honestly interesting to see what kind of things people can code with this now and all the kind of applications that are gonna be built on this as well. Now, there's also something really cool, which I guess ChatGPT just announced that which Bard also just announced as well that I didn't honestly expect. You can see right here, essentially what happened with Bard is they now have integrations. You can see it with YouTube, with Zapier, with Adobe, with many different programs and applications, they're essentially going to be these plugin type programs that you can literally introduce to Bard. So this is gonna be a major step up for Bard because as you know, ChatGPT is slowly rolling out plugins to a limited set of users. And of course, while this stuff is still, I guess you could say in alpha, according to ChatGPT, it seems that Google are trying to quickly roll this out as quickly as possible. Now you do know that of course, these other applications and integrations are going to make whichever platform they're on much more useful. For example, if you have OpenTable where you book restaurants, if that is on Google's Bard rather than ChatGPT, it's going to be much more effective than just using that solo application such as Bard to ask it about restaurants. So the more integrations that you're going to have and whichever platform, whether it be Google or whether it be Bard, building a more easy to use interface for their plugins to be built on, they're going to be winning because as you know, developers and all of these coders are the, going to be the ones who fine tune specific programs that people can use and make the software much more efficient and user-friendly. Another cool feature I'm really excited about from Bard is that you can literally just export any of your prompts or any of your tech generation outputs straight to Gmail or straight to Docs, which is honestly a really nice smooth feature rather than having to copy and paste that text. So this feature is really, really good because as we know, everybody uses Gmail and G Suite. So this is a really smooth integration that I think is going to work well for all the users. Then of course, we have Bard's integrations into Google. So you can see right here, what are some must-see sites in your and you can see right here that it actually adds some of the stuff from Google search. Now, I'm actually glad that they added this because of course, as you know, everybody uses Google search. So it makes sense for them to literally integrate this into Bard. And this is actually really good because you can now essentially see links and hyperlinks, which you can click, which is great because of course, now unlike ChatGPT and GPT-4, which doesn't have access to the internet from 2021 onwards, you can actually access up-to-date information. So I think this is a key milestone over ChatGPT that GPT-4 honestly just doesn't have. Then as you know, Google decided to up the bar once again, introducing some multimodal features into Bard. So right here, you can see a user takes an image 
image of their two lovely dogs. Then, of course, Bard essentially identifies these dogs and it says, write a funny caption about these two. So you can see right here when you're trying to figure out which one of you is a good boy. That's actually a pretty decent joke. And this is a key feature that although a GPT-4 technically does have, OpenAI hasn't rolled it out yet. We aren't sure why. Maybe they're waiting on AI safety. But we do know that Google is saying, essentially, look, we're going to be rolling out this feature. You're going to be able to upload your pictures and you're going to be able to do quite a ton with this stuff. So for those of you saying that, you know, GPT-4 already has this, we're going to see exactly how Google manages to do this. So this is going to be very, very interesting as to what Google does differently to GPT-4's multimodal feature and if they actually manage to roll it out quicker, because as you know, like we've said before, this is an AI race. Now, of course, right here as well, this is really cool because you can see right here with Bard, you can actually search up the current universities that you might want to go to. And then right here, this is something really, really amazing. Then right here, you can see that with Bard, you can actually say, now show these on a map. So right there, they gather information from Google Maps, okay? This is why Bard is going to be so crazy because, because it literally integrates with all of the G Suite apps. You can export stuff to Gmail, export it to Docs, use information from Google Maps, literally get stuff to Google. So I think Bard, this integration is honestly going to be crazy. And you can see right here, show these options as a table. Then what this user does is say, hey, I wanna know which ones of these are actually public or private universities. And then just like that, you can literally add this into the table and this data is set. Now we do know that ChatGPT did just get code interpreter, which is actually absolutely insane, which we will cover in another video, but to just have this to be able to access live information at a very good pace, seems like it might just be the defining feature that makes a ton of people use Bard over ChatGPT, because as you already know, you're likely someone who already uses Gmail, YouTube, Google search. So why would you use ChatGPT if Bard is potentially better and can integrate seamlessly with these other applications. So honestly, this seems like Google knows exactly what they're doing. And it seems that they're clawing back a lot of the market share that they did lose to Bing. So Bard, honestly, guys, right now, I think that this is a great program. Of course, the demo was a flop earlier this year, but it seems that Google have actually redeemed themselves completely. So this is Bard plus tools. So essentially, as you know, how ChatGPT now has plugins available to some limited access users, Bard actually now has tools essentially where you can actually also have these plugins as well. This is a great upgrade because as you know, trying to copy and paste many different prompts and put them into many different softwares is honestly quite time consuming. Now, if you don't know what Adobe Firefly is, let me give you the quick rundown. Essentially, Adobe Firefly is an entire AI suite that is dedicated to creating AI images and essentially creative AI works that are pretty, pretty impressive. Now, this is by the company Adobe that makes Photoshop, that makes Premiere Pro, all of the creative suite programs that many creators like myself to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So what Google have done is they've actually partnered with Adobe so that now in Bard, you actually get this integration where you can actually generate images quickly. So like we've said, you can write an image of a unicorn at a cake at a kid's party, and essentially you can get that image pretty instantly. And this is really, really cool because as you know, Adobe is the leader in the creative suite. They've got tons of cash, they've got tons of different software, and we know that this over time is going to improve. Now, of course, software out there like Mid Journey does exist, which is pretty incredible and honestly quite a seamless integration. So the question goes to you, are you going to be using Bard now that it has many integrations with Google Maps with up-to-date information, or are you going to be sticking to ChatGPT and GPT-4 for your reliable sources of information? Both softwares are going to be upgrading themselves in terms of the plugins and upgrades over time, but it's going to be interesting to see which one is going to be easier to use and which one fosters an entirely new community.